Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Melanie. I'm a financial analyst and we talk about side hustles, passive income, entrepreneurship, and all things money on this channel. And today's video is all about worst money habits that people make in their 20s. Obviously, you want to not spend a whole decade making horrible mistakes. Watch this video so that you stop making those mistakes. Number one is not learning how to use your credit card. So as a new 20 something, you are new to the credit world and the credit cards love that you don't know what you're doing. So they send you a credit card and most introductory rates for a credit card for people who don't already have established credit is about 21.68%. And sometimes it can even be higher. So you get a credit card, you don't know how to use it, and then you rack up all of these you know, purchases on the credit card and then you pay the minimum payment every month. Don't do that. Worst credit card money mistake that you can make because you're paying over time more money for the item, sometimes double for the item, sometimes triple, depending on how long it took you to pay it back and get it off of your credit card. What a lot of people don't tell new 20 somethings about credit cards is, yes, we know that you don't have credit and you want a credit card to establish credit, but this is how you go about using a credit card and this is how you don't go about using a credit card. So I would say the fastest and quickest advice I can give you on how to use a credit card is set up alerts that come to your phone. So go on the website, the credit card website, you log in, you set up alerts like balance alerts. If your maximum balance is $5,000, then set up an alert that you don't want to hit like a thousand. So I don't want to go over a thousand dollars on this particular credit card. So I'm going to set up an alert for a thousand. And when I hit a thousand, I'm going to start paying that down aggressively, or I'm going to start not using it. And then the second thing is set up daily purchase alerts. So you can set it up as low as one cent or as much as a hundred dollars. I set mine up for one cent. So if I spend one cent on my credit card, I get a text message that says, you spent $10.19 at Chick-fil-A or you spent $30, $40 at the gas station. And it just reminds me of how much I'm spending because we all know that when you use a credit card, it does not really register with our brain that this money is leaving my account or this money is leaving my wallet. Definitely take that into account. People tend to spend more when they use a credit card versus when they use a debit card. I do have another video about the specifics on this. Um, I'll link that down in the description, but just a quick note, set up those two alerts. So at least you're getting two text messages a day about this one credit card. And definitely if you are out of an introductory rate, which is zero, most times creditors do not give new people or new like 20 somethings a zero interest credit card. And if they do, it's probably for only six months, which is not that long for you to save up your money and start paying it down. But definitely set up those alerts because that'll remind you of how much your balance is on a daily basis. And it'll remind you every time you purchase something so that you can know, wow, today I just made six purchases and that equaled a hundred dollars. I better stop using my card today or this week. Number two is not setting your money up to grow. So I made this mistake when I was in my twenties because I was really, uneducated on how to make my money grow. I just wanted to save my money and protect it from getting spent by me. So I just put it into a savings account, not a high yield savings account by the way, but just a regular savings account. But when you're in your 20s, you have the most time and the most liquid money to sort of risk because you may not have a family, you may not have a house, you may not have a apartment to pay rent for you're probably just going to college or you just have you know a part-time job or a full-time job but what I would do in your 20s is fix this mistake don't stop your money from growing so if you don't know how to invest I would learn how to invest in stocks I would learn how to invest in your 401k if you do have a job and learn how to contribute like getting get a contribution schedule for that 401k that works for your income. But also you can set up, if you don't wanna invest at all, you can set up a certificate of deposit at your bank, which is a CD, or you can put your money in a high yield savings account and just decide, okay, this is the money that I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save 
50 or $20 every week and it's going to go into this high yield savings account. And then once I meet whatever I want to have in this high yield savings account, I'm going to turn that into a certificate of deposit for X amount of months. And then you can research which banks have the higher earning percentage rate if you want to go that route. Not budgeting. People who live paycheck to paycheck usually don't have a budget and that's why they're living paycheck to paycheck. A lot of people in their 20s make this mistake. This is their first time they've gotten a job or second time they've gotten a job and they want to live paycheck to paycheck because they might not have a lot of bills. So they can spend what they have on their paycheck and then wait two more weeks and spend what they have again on their paycheck. Don't do this. Budget your money that you have so that when you get in your 30s and 40s, you're not still living paycheck to paycheck. So practice doing this now so that you can be good at it when you get to your 30s. So we all know we're on our phone all the time and there's a lot of budgeting apps that you can get and just download them and then use them from your phone. According to NerdWallet, these are the most popular budgeting apps and the easiest ones to use. Mint, Good Budget, Every Dollar, Personal Capital. And Personal Capital, this one is about tracking your investments and tracking your 401k contributions. If you stuck around this far in the video, go ahead and hit that like button so it lets me know to continue to make more financial content like this because you guys like it. Number four is having only one stream of income. And this was one of my biggest mistakes in my 20s was just looking for a job and looking for that one source of income to pay for everything I needed and everything I wanted. When that company that I was working for kind of closed down and then they give you no notice when they're going to fire you. So I mean, it's not like when you quit a job, it's courtesy to give two weeks notice to your company. But a company when they want to fire you or let you go, they can give you five minutes. That is the way they do things. Don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, even in your 20s. You want to have multiple streams of income or at least just start out with two streams of income in your 20s and then when you get to your 30s, you'll be more comfortable with managing two or three streams of income. Establishing this second stream of income in your 20s is great because you don't have a lot of responsibilities. You might not have a house or a family yet to take care of. You might only just be paying your personal bills, which is like your rent and your car note or whatever you have. It's not like you're focusing on paying for private school or daycare or whatever for your children. So definitely start having a second stream of income in your 20s. So aside from your nine to five, you could start a business and then you have time to let that business grow. You can be patient with growing that business and learning the ropes of the business that you start rather than being in your 30s and 40s and having to rush all of the natural time it takes to grow a business. You don't want to do that. This mistake I see a lot of 20 somethings make in the financial world. They are just not prepared and they think about I only want this one job and when I get off at five o'clock. So that's really not financially secure, especially nowadays when anything can happen to your job. So definitely look into a second stream of income, whether it's your own business that you establish or another job like a side hustle or something that will give you passive income so you don't have to dedicate too much time to it in the long run. Number five, and so this one is gonna cause a little bit of controversy, but I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the list anyway that this is one of the worst mistakes that 20 somethings make and it is leasing a car so i bought my first car when i was 16 and i did not lease the car i just bought it you know and paid the car note a couple of times and then by the end of the first year it was already paid for because of the amount of money that i had put down on it and um a lot of people would suggest not doing this because cars are dramatically devalued once you buy a new car and drive it off the lot you're losing a lot of value to that car but it's even worse when you lease a car because when you go to the dealership and you lease a car you still have to pay leasing fees you pay the monthly payment for the car and then when you're done with the lease most leases are three to four years you can get them longer if you want but when you lease a car you don't own anything at the end of it and then when you return the car, you still have to pay end of lease fees. And if you terminate the lease before the term date, you have to pay lease termination fees. So this is a lot of money going into just fees and not going into actually paying down the note of the car like when you buy a car. So I would suggest if you're just in your 20s, I would get a used car that is about two, three years old, 
which is probably going to have the same value as the brand new car once you drive the brand new car off the lot. And then you know it's in good condition because you can go to CarMax or Vroom or all those different car selling, used car selling companies and just get the history report of that specific car. And then nine times out of 10, most 20 somethings aren't going to hold onto a car that long or they're not going to really appreciate that car because when I was 16, everybody had the Ford Mustang and they crunched them up because they were new drivers. I had a Honda Civic and somebody ran into that and it was crunched up because they were a new driver. So you don't want to get a great expensive car in your 20s unless you're an amazing driver and the people in your college or wherever you frequent a lot are also amazing drivers because all those car accidents in that high school parking lot was just enough for me to go and get something used and never look back. But anyway, definitely look into not leasing a car, but just buying the car or just buying a used car if you want to go that route. So take these five tips if you're in your 20s and don't make these mistakes. Stop making these mistakes right now so that you can be set up when you get to your 30s and 40s. If you like content like this, go ahead and click the like button and the subscribe button. I will see you guys in the next video and the algorithm thinks you should watch this video next.